so nice to meet you. So nice to officially meet you. I'm like so excited about today. For me, my heart is to change this narrative around the behaviors that follow trauma and, and not treating someone or responding to someone or judging someone for their actions, but asking what happened to you? <laughs> like, how did we get here? We actually met last week. Yes. And you had come to our Encino clinic and got a spec scan and we talked about it. But there's like way more to this story. Yeah. And our goal today, I'll we'll go over your scan again, but in more sort of clinical detail. Um, because I think you told me you're a neuroscience nerd. I am a neuroscience nerd. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, I am. <laughs> if you ever need a little shadow, I'll come hang out with you. <laughs> uh, the brain is cool. The brain is very cool. Yeah. Um, the brain is in too, which I get excited about. I love that. So you've come out publicly that you that your rape when you were 18 ultimately triggered the memories of the child sexual abuse. I don't have anything until around five and then from five to 11, I recount um, incidents throughout. And then when I was 13, I have a singled out memory that was just a one it was one thing that um, that I don't have anything. I don't have the sense of anything else other other anything else at that time. This top the way this is talked about is with so much shame, and I am I am absolutely uninterested in shame. It is there is nothing about my journey that I invite shame into anymore. And and that that's how we get to the point where we can articulate the nature of these pervasive tra traumas and stuff, you know, as horrible as they are. So I, however we can get it out there, I, I well, I had one of my guys who just had, uh, yesterday, I saw his follow-up scan. He'd done the supplements and hyperbaric oxygen. The brain was so much help. Yay, okay, amazing. Have you ever known anybody with the dissociative identity disorder? That's yeah, yeah. My what doctor they used to call it multiple, multiple personality. personality. Yeah, my doctor. Sh it's a massive spectrum, obviously, right? Um, but she said that I had it pretty seriously, and my splits before before my memories came back, I had definitive splits. You see, you'll in my history, you'll see me. You know, I like just show up with a black wig and a new personality and I was this you know tough little baddie and then I'd be the bohemian you know flower child and and also being an actress there was like oh my ability to split all of my roles were splits but I didn't even realize I was doing it at all until I did a project I'm 90210 I was on for five years and at year three during my hiatus I did a film where I played a very very it was an independent film I played a very um like cerebral disturbed strange little girl that was very close to what who I feel I am on the inside and it was very exposing very confronting probably a bit re-traumatizing without realizing it maybe even a bit healing as well during some of it. But the crazy thing about it was that I wrapped that film at 2 a.m. on a Tuesday and had to be happy, crazy Beverly Hills bon bombshell on Wednesday at noon. And I couldn't find her. She was not accessible. I was dark. I was in this like, I was very deep into this character, Pauline, and I couldn't get, and it was- What was the name of that movie? Um, Excision. I mean, when I look back in hindsight, I'm just like, oh my dear God. But I, I there was one moment where I experienced it consciously. As um, I, I, I could be co-conscious with my little, and it was very clearly defined that I was me, anchored in real time. And little me, little Anna was popping up and I was very, I can be very soothing and very nurturing.
but I spent a lot of my life as the split I was when I was 13 and on. And she was a balls to the wall, middle fingers to the sky, anarchist from hell, <laughs> who will stab you with the spike ring she wears and you'll like it and she'll make you lick the blood from it. I mean, she was a nasty little creature, <laughs> but I have so much gratitude from her to her because she got me out of the hell that I was in. But, but your scamp is not like many of the other multiples I've seen. Really? Yeah. Did somebody give you a diagnosis of being bipolar? Mm -hmm. Tell me about it. In 2017, I actually went, knowing for years that I felt like I was considering the fact that I had family history and the symptoms seemed to line up, but I went to um, see a psychiatrist after. I would use my manic um, symptoms to act to to get me out of depression so i would i would kind of manipulate my symptoms i knew that if i if i got went on a crazy you know like sex spree or shopping spree or any kind of heightened thrill seeking skydiving all the time like doing all these crazy thrill seeking type things <laughs> but i could always manipulate myself out of depression so i never really got too stuck and then 2017 came around and I went down a depression spiral that no matter what I did, I couldn't get out of. I tried to not go on like no sleeping benders where I would act to, to activate my mania. I tried sexual spending. I tried tra traveling. I went all over the globe that, that first part of that year. Um, I could not get out of the depression. All of the ways that I... Depressions in many ways, and the hypomania, um, or pre-trauma therapy, right? So how, how do you know it's not just your brain's pissed off? Absolutely, and so I... Because you don't really have a bipolar scam. I have, I have a program that lets me rotate it. It's pretty cool. Wow. Oh my gosh. That's my brain. Your brain is the most oxygen hungry organ in your body. It's 2% of your body's weight. It uses 20% of the oxygen in your body. 20% of blood flow. And you have low blood flow, especially to the front part of your brain. Our goal is to activate that. This could give you depression and mood instability and irritability um, that makes really a lot sleepy of sense. frontal lobes the frontal lobes are your brain's break okay and mm. when it's low and you've had intense childhood sexual trauma you split as a way to manage it and the brighter you are the more you split Ever in a car accident? Um, yes, I was in a car accident when I was about 15 or 16, and also when I was about 25, maybe. Um, both were, I didn't hit my head, but I, you know, got flung pretty, you know, intensely. So, like whiplash for sure, yes. So, because when I see your scan, the reason I think trauma is you see these dimples in the back. So I have low activity in the front, but if you fall on the back of your head, your brain then bounces and hits the front. And it's in a skull that has sharp bony ridges. And so, I don't know why God didn't put bumper guards. Yeah, it's been bumper guards. Why didn't guards. you put bumper guards there? Hello. It's Help. like I didn't know people would play hit soccer balls. <laughs> That's so stupid. Thought we were going to be in prayer and meditation all day. <laughs> You've already done so much work, but there's more to do. There's more to do. There's more to do. Now if you do everything I say. <laughs> I will do everything you say. <laughs> this is how much better your brain. Can be. Really? Yeah. 
Oh my God! It's so perfect cotton what candy. What I want you to do is love your brain. Yes. Because if you love your brain, we oh. can make it healthy, and then you're a better actress. Love I mean, you're already my great. Brain. Right? Yes. But <laughs> ultimately, it's your brain that shows up. It's your brain that's consistent, and with a healthier brain, relationships are better. Money's better. Health is better. Everything. As a rule, I have always liked my brain in the state it exists in normally. <laughs> so, your brain is not permanently damaged, but it's struggling, and it can be better. Okay. And that's our goal. And it can be like dramatically better in three months. Really? Yeah. <laughs> three months. Let's do this. Everything starts with what do you want? Mm. What do you want in your relationships? What do you want for work?、Mm. What do you want for your money?、Mm. Your physical, emotional, spiritual health. What, what do you, what do you want? want? Have to define it.、Yeah. Write it out. Post it. All great businesses have a business plan. You need to have.、That. You know to have a life business plan. A life business plan. Yeah. Because that way, when you're interacting with someone. You go well. Does this fit、mm-hmm. the goals I have? And that's what your chronologues do. They always go. Does it fit? Is it true? And does it fit? And when we strengthen, those things will all be easy、mm-hmm. for you. You are so articulate and、um, so bright. Thank you. It's, it's really. <laughs> Now I'm very grateful for this journey and for all of these wonderful little things that I no longer see as my life. Before the pandemic, 51% of the population had a mental health problem at some point in their life. It's more normal to have a problem、yeah. than to not. Is anybody? <laughs> is anyone? What is normal? <laughs> right. I think if you think somebody's normal. That means you don't. You don't know them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because we love what we do. Yeah. So many people are suffering. Yeah.